Hello, my name is Damon Forge, and I'm here to quickly show you how to set up and install the Universal API web service. This web service is essentially this, the back end to the Universal API mod that allows for the mod to communicate with the database, um, as well as other APIs, which I am not going to go over too much in this video for. Um, so quickly to get started, the Universal API a uh, web service requires two parts. The first part uh, being the MongoDB community database. Um, essentially, you could just install this on your server. Um, pretty simple, click download, um, and I'll go quickly through the installer. You can also choose to use a uh, managed database um, like MongoDB Atlas. Now, they have a free version. Um, depending on your use case, this may or may not be necessary. Um, it's very useful though in some cases, especially if you were to be running this on something else. And I'll go over that later. Um, but start off here. So once you've installed the MongoDB community database, you're also going to need the Universal API web service. Uh, the web service itself, you're going to look at and click the web, UAPI web service installer. There is the web service in Linux. This is for a more manual setup using something like the non Security Service Manager or on Linux setting up using a system control manager or something like that. Um, all right, so to start, you're gonna download this and you're also gonna download these. So just create download MongoDB community server, download whatever the current version is. And here, you're also gonna make sure you're gonna download the latest version. You might see a bunch of other versions, just make sure you download the one that's marked latest. All right, so once you've downloaded those, which I already have, you're going to install them. So we're going to first install MongoDB cert web, uh, MongoDB. And like next, accept, next, complete is good. And next, 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 install. Um, I missed it there, but there was a checkbox for a uh, compass. Make sure that's checked. It should be checked by default. So it should already be there. All right. So I'm going to let this kind of run the background. All right, next step is to install the UAPI web service installer. So that's this one at the bottom here, the 200 megabyte one. You're gonna just double click on it and you're click run. Uh, if you don't see those, it should just pop up for you. Uh, it depends on your security settings for Windows. All right, um, this should run on, I believe 2016 and up for Windows. I haven't tested anything before 2016, um, as well as it should run on Windows 10 you're using anything else, um, as long as it's newer, that should be fine. All right. Um, so one thing to note with these uh, database and web service is these are, um, there's no clustering involved in with this system here specifically. So for instance, if you want to set up multiple separate communities within your system uh, on your one server, let's say you have a PBE and a PVP server, and you want these to be two separate databases, you're going to have to install the web service twice. Uh, there are ways to change ports and such, um, or use separate servers uh, to host it if you have multiple servers available to you. All right, so this is installed. Um, this hasn't installed just yet. So we're just going to wait for that um, while we're waiting. Um, I guess we can go over how to set up the mod. So um, for this, we're gonna once you get once you open up the Universal API Web Manager. If it's all white, just wait a second or just move this around a bit. Um, oh, I didn't mean to minimize all that, but there you go. Um, so once you're there, um, sometimes the button's buggy, but go to System Config, and in System Config, we're just going to uh, copy Server Auth here. All right, so you just highlight it, click Control C, and then we're going to go into Universal API.json in the Universal API folder in your profile folder. All right, um, and we're going to paste that in the server auth. All right, next we're going to do is we're going to then set the server URL. So this is going to be HTTPS colon slash slash. Oh, and that's not being installed, but we'll finish what we're doing here. Um, and then the IP address of the server. So 192.95.50.50 is my IP. You will enter your own IP. I repeat, your own server's IP address goes in here. Um, you can set up domain names and such, uh, but I'm not gonna go over that in this video. Uh, but it does work perfectly fine with like things like Cloudflare and other CDNs, All right? Um, 
server ID, this should be unique for each server. All right. Um, this is referenced in server uh, map link and other potentially other mods. This allows for modders to identify which server they're actually on. So for this, I'm just going to call this, this is my test three server. So I'm just going to call this test three. All right. So once I'm done, I'm going to save it. Um, you can also enable things like built-in logging and etc. Um, and prompt on Discord on the connect. This essentially just opens up a web page to your Discord connector. You need to have Discord enabled in order for this to work, of course. Make sure the database is installed, which it seems like it is. You will then restart the server. So this is my test server three. I'm just gonna restart this. All right. And as that's restarting, I'm just gonna show you guys. So once you open MongoDB compass, you can click connect and that will get you in here. All right. Um, so in the config, I'm gonna show you a few more things while we're waiting for the server to restart. Uh, just quickly going over, um, for the most part, you're gonna leave this all the same. If you were using the MongoDB Atlas, you would actually paste the uh, connection URL with the password and such in this field right here. Um, and if you made a different database name, for instance, you need to make sure the database name matches here. All right. Um, next thing is client rights. This is for debugging for modders. So just leave that disabled at all times. Uh, the second part is the port, which again, if you're going to run multiple instances, you might need to change the port. Uh, leaving it 443 is the best thing because then uh, you don't have to worry about other aspects later because uh, you will need to specify the port if you change the port. Uh, certificate and certificate key. Uh, this is if you want to use your own custom SSL certificates. This will be the path to the certificate. So make sure you like you just paste the path to the certificates in there. All right, check for new version. It's just essentially at the beginning, it will warn you if your server, your, if your disk, um, universal API mod is out of date. Second thing, uh, then you have Discord down here, which is pretty straightforward, I hope. Uh, pretty much you're just gonna copy your client ID, your client secret, your bot token, your guild ID, which the guild ID is your Discord server ID. Um, then require role. So if you want to allow a role, require a role to connect their, their Discord to their Steam account, pretty much within the database. You can add that role. So for instance, let's say you want them to first have to verify uh, the rules or something like that. Blackhurst roles are the reverse. They just, if they have this role, they won't allow, they won't be allowed. Um, and then you can also restrict kind of sign up by country. By default, China's blocked, um, but you could also go through and block other things as well. And then down here, there's just a few other different config options, uh, which I won't really go over other than the translate one, which by default, I use my own Libre translate API. Uh, that I have set up. Um, if you're using this in the next few months or maybe even year, this API should still be working. If it's not, um, you might need to set up your own Libre, Trans Libre Translate API. There are instructions on the internet for how that works. All right, um, so if you make any changes or something like that to this, all you're gonna do is you're gonna hit save. That should save it and then restart, which will restart the API web service um, to ensure that everything is saved. All right, all right, so there we go. All right, so next step is we're going to look at the about page quickly and make sure everything's working. So if you go to the about page, you'll see the database is online, Discord is disabled, Translate is enabled. Um, and if you go through here, you also get access to the links to download or the cloud and so forth. All right, um, also check here every once in a while to make sure that you're using the most recent version if you don't want to manually check my, my GitHub, all right? Um, next steps here um, is the database editor, which I'm going to go over quickly. So uh, since the server's restarted, it, you may not, if you don't see anything here, it usually means the server hasn't connected correctly to the database, which means you might have a few things to check. Um, if you do see everything here, you're great to go. Um, I'll go over some troubleshooting steps in a few minutes, but for the most part, um, you'll see access to the editor to edit your stuff. So for instance, with banking, if I wanna change this to be able to deposit ruined bills and I wanna say, make this you know, 500,000 instead of, or five, five million, instead of 1 million, you can change all that, change values for the money and such in here. And then you hit save and it will save it. If you go back to map, if you go to map link, there's other information in here too. So you can edit and change all your values, save it and etc. Uh, the other thing here is I do have a simple mod wiper. I hopefully eventually have a full editor in here as well. Uh, not just for the globals, but for players and objects as well. Uh, but for now, uh, you have to go through 
um, here to delete. Uh, this is just an easy way to delete. Um, so I can say delete all banking data. So I type in banking, delete. Um, you may need to talk to whoever made the mods to make sure that you're using the right tag. Now, of course, I'm deleting nothing because there's no players that have connected to my server yet. All right. Um, so from there, um, if you're, for instance, having issues where none of the globals are showing up, the, or this is showing anything offline, the database is offline, make sure your connection string is correct. Um, if you're doing a local install, um, just make sure it is um, the MongoDB local host. Uh, if you're having issues, you can check your ports as well. Um, do not open this port to the internet. This from there, um, if you're if this is working and this is all online, this is showing up date, database online, translate enabled, um, but your servers still aren't connected to the API, issues client side, or you're having issues. The other thing is to make sure your firewall, sorry, this is something you need to also make sure. So you need to make sure you have four, four, the port or whatever port you are using in your config, um, which again, 443 is the one you should be using um, to make yourself simplest. You can create a, you go create a new rule, choose a port, and just choose port 443 TCP. All right, allow the connection. There you go. And you can give it a name. So you can just call this, you know, Universal API 443. Oops. 443. Finish, and that just creates the real firewall role. And that will make sure everyone can connect. All right, uh, one key thing is this does need public internet access as the clients connect directly to this as well. Um, that's one of the magics. It actually helps improve, uh, remove a lot of RPC calls and certain aspects of things. All right, um, so that is all on how to set everything up. The only other thing I'm gonna quickly show you is the MongoDB Compass. If you didn't already know, you click connect when you open it. And if you go into here, um, I'll go into the database and then go into globals. You're going to see your config. If your player had connected, you'll also see a database called players. Uh, objects will be a database called, or well, they call it collection, sorry. Collection called globals, collection called players, collection called objects, as well as logs and other things that uh, may appear based on different configurations of the server. All right, um, by default, there should just be globals and then players eventually once players start connecting. Um, if you are using a game service provider, uh, you're not out of luck. You don't need a dedicated machine. You can actually use um, a Linux machine, and actually pretty cheaply. Um, the cheapest one uh, for most people is probably fine, is the $3.50 US um, server. Um, pretty much uh, it'll work. Um, if you're using this, definitely use the, sh the free uh, MongoDB Atlas service, um, and just make sure you pick uh, two data centers super close together for each of these. Um, so just keep that in mind. Um, there's instructions on my GitHub uh, under the Linux installation on the wiki. All right. Um, and there's a referral link in my description below for Vulture. Um, feel free, you know, click that. You get, I think, $100 in credits, $50 in credits. And then I also get some credits to help show your support for me. Um, so it's a win-win for both of us. Um, so I appreciate if you are going to use Vulture to click that link and uh, buy it through there. All right. Um, if there's any questions, feel free to uh, go into the Discord in the description below. Or if you have any other questions, you can also ask them in the comments. But I am much more active on Discord. All right. Um, and I think that is all. Thank you very much for listening and watching my tutorial. Hopefully this wasn't too long-winded. Um, and I hope everyone learned something. Thank you.